What is up guys, BMC coming at you with another one. Today we're gonna be doing a beginner's guide. Somebody asked me in the comments to do a beginner's tutorial. So a lot of you guys might know these tips already. You might learn something new, so stick around and find out. Let's get right into it. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the layout. So up here we got our, our play and our stop button, our record button, our metronome, you can, you can always see what all of these uh, buttons do. If you just look over here in the, in the left, anything you hover over, <clears throat> it will show you here a description of it. Like it's showing you right here, the hint panel, because I'm hovering over the hint panel. Over here, the metronome, you got a typing keyboard. If you want to use your uh, computer keys as a keyboard, scroll through. I usually never really touch any of these things, to be honest with you guys, except for this. I'll use and yeah that's about it so over here we got our uh, our playlist which is where we build our songs after with all of our patterns uh, we got our piano roll which is where we click in all of our keys and we got our <clears throat> these are really the main four that I use right here this is our pattern so this is where you build your drums and stuff and uh, just put some drums in here, just in case. Get some more going. All right, anyways, I'll get back to that after. <clears throat> so yeah, we got our mixer here. Our channel rack. We got our piano roll. And we got our playlist. This is where we arrange all these other things. Honestly, guys, I don't even really touch any of these. Um, over here, we got all of our sounds in this window. If you don't see this window, it's probably because you might you might have double clicked this bar. So just grab this bar over here if you don't see this window and it should open. Once you have this window open, you're going to see that these are where all your uh, your drums and your sounds are going to come to. So a lot of your like any packs that you load into FL Studio are going to be here on the left side. And the way you bring them in, I didn't know this for a long time as well. You go to options, you go to file settings. And as you can see, my uh, FL Studio packs is here. And this is where I put pretty much all my drum kits and my drum sounds. And if you want to add a pack here, or you want to add a folder into this uh, into this area here. All you got to do is click this little folder icon and then pick the folder that you want Fruity Loops to uh, to recognize. And as long as you have WAV files and MP3 files inside of those uh, folders, they're going to show up here. OK, and then uh, if you're trying to get plugins into Fruity Loops as well, what you want to do is go into this tab here and manage your plugins. I probably just crashed my computer. Yeah, I, oh, I'm going to probably have to turn this whole thing off because my plugin list is literally huge. I have to leave this for like half an hour, an hour sometimes just for it to load up. So, yeah, there it goes. Let's go ahead and open it up again. All right, so. We talked about the manage plugin list. We talked about the file settings. Uh, another thing I want to talk to you guys about is when you do make beats, the organization portion. So as you can see on my desktop, I have a bunch of stuff because it's just a mess right now. But I also have this folder called beat stars. <clears throat> this is where I put all my beats that I'm going to upload. And as you can see, I keep the artwork the send out in case I want to send it out to an artist and I don't want it completely tagged, but I still want an MP3. I'll put it in this folder. I put my tagged MP3s in this folder, my track outs I'll put in this folder. I'll show you guys a little bit more about that after. And my WAV files I put all in this folder. It makes it a lot easier to have all these folders just laid out already because that way when you're actually saving your beat 
or ex sorry, exporting your beat from Fruity Loops, you could just save it right into one, whatever uh, folder you want and it's all gonna be organized. So the way you save, let me just, you know what, I'm gonna open up, I don't know. So once you got your beat all laid out and you wanna export it, what you're gonna do is hit Control R and that's gonna save it as a WAV file. And uh, all you're gonna do is want, you wanna name your beat and you wanna bring it into that folder that I was talking about that you already previously created, which is uh, for, my, for my case, it would be this WAV file uh, folder. And you're gonna save it. Sorry, Control R. I'll just do it just so you guys can see. Beat stars, wave. Okay, we're gonna save it. And now this window is gonna pop up. And what you wanna do is make sure the wave bit depth is, is 24. And the resampling quality is at 24. Uh, and yeah, you're gonna hit start and you're gonna go ahead and um, it will just export right into that folder. You won't have to worry about anything else. Also, when you're doing track outs, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna go control R. And then you're gonna go to uh, your folder. You're gonna go to your wave, um, sorry, not your wave. You're gonna go to the track out. And you're gonna make a folder inside of this folder for that specific beat. I'll explain why in a second, but you're gonna make a folder inside of this folder to separate all the files because when you export a track out, you're actually exporting every single one of these lines. So you're, you're exporting this as a wave. You're exporting this as a wave. You're exporting this all as a wave you know what i mean each each uh each line is pretty much its own each mixer track sorry each mixer track is its own wave file so whoever gets your beat they can do whatever they want with it they can take out an instrument if they don't want it they can turn the 808s up turn them down do whatever they want to do and the way you export that is you're gonna go control r you're gonna pick the folder, you're gonna hit save, and then you're gonna split mixer tracks. You're gonna make sure those settings are the same, 24, 24, split mixer tracks, and what? And then it's gonna export it with the mixer tracks split, pretty much. Okay, and the only difference between the MP3, when you're exporting an MP3, you wanna make sure that this button's clicked, the MP3 button. And uh, also you're gonna be exporting it as a mp3 which i forget the hotkey for it so just go there export as mp3 save it and then it's going to automatically put mp3 here you won't have to worry about these wave bit depth, depth settings anymore but you're going to have to uh what i like to do to keep the the size of the mp3 small is bring this point sync down to 16 and also make sure that that split mixer tracks is unchecked because I've exported so many beats and left this on by mistake and it's just a pain. So remember to take this off after. Then you're gonna hit start and that's it. All right guys, so let's say you're ready to make your first beat now. So now it's time for sound selection. You wanna go and look for some new sounds or whatever. I know a lot of you guys, if you're a beginner, you're not gonna have all these uh, plugins that I'm using. So I'm just gonna use a Fruity Loops keys to give you guys an idea of how I would come up with a melody or come up with a chord progression or whatever. Also, we're gonna go through and look for some drum sounds. If you guys don't have any uh, kits, you can find a lot online, but I also have one on my website right now. It's completely free. It's called the BMC's Dimensions Drum Kit. It's got a lot of good sounds in here. I'll probably use this actually to, uh, to make this beat. So find some high quality sounds. Maybe that's it for, from there. We're gonna get an 808 from, from here. Probably use this one. I've been using that one a lot. So when you're looking for a kick, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing trap music and rap music, you obviously want a kick that's punchy. So let's just take a listen here and let's see which one stands out the most, okay?
Okay, so for me it was this one. We're gonna go ahead and use that one. Usually what I like to do with my kicks is turn this volume all the way up. There are about three different volume controls that you need to know about. So within any VST, there's gonna be a volume control. I don't know if FL keys have it. No, they don't have it. They just have this one here. This volume control is the same as this volume control. As you can see, it's they're both moving. But let's say in expand two, for instance, they have another control for volume inside the VST. And they also have a control for volume inside of the channel rack. And all that happens, all that volume happens before the last volume, which is going to be on the mixer. That's when you're mixing all your sounds. Okay, so if you want it to sound louder before you start mixing it, this is where you would correct it or change it or bring it down, bring it up, whatever. So with my kicks, I usually do just turn that all the way up. And yeah, we got a clap. Maybe we'll get a, a snare or a perk. So you picked out your sounds, now you're ready to go start your beat. I always start with the melody. It's personal preference, obviously, but I just think when you structure your drums around your melody, it just sounds more complete as a song. So I'll always go and start messing around on the keys. If you have all the sounds that you wanna use already all laid out, what I also like to do is bring it right into the mixer so we can get all these, um, all these sounds laid out and we can start adding effects, because I know right off the bat that the FL keys is kind of dry. It doesn't sound too bad actually. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is click all these uh, green boxes, which the way you do it is just double click one. Double click one of the green boxes and then we're gonna bring it into the mixer. You're gonna go to the very first channel right here. You're gonna right click on channel one of the mixer right right click go to channel routing and you're gonna go route selected channel starting from this track boom you're gonna have everything laid out for you right here okay so now let's go back to our fl keys another tip if you're a beginner you might not know this if you do have a keyboard like i do i have a midi um whatever this is how you highlight whatever you want to play on your MIDI. So right now I'm playing the 808. I'm playing the kick, playing the hat, clap. Okay, so now let's just start messing around on the keys. I know a lot of you beginners will probably not have a MIDI keyboard. So for that reason, I'm gonna stick to creating a melody inside of the piano roll. So we're gonna go up here to this top corner and we're gonna go to helpers, scale highlighting, and we're gonna pick a scale. I'm gonna pick the minor harmonic. If you want dark sounding trap, you're probably gonna go with the minor natural. This is for like more juice world type beats would be the minor harmonic. If you want a happy sounding beat, you're gonna go with the major. You could also go with like Dorian or uh, Phrygian. So you're gonna pick a key on one side. We'll probably go with, I'm gonna go with F. It could be any key, it doesn't matter. And as you can see, these white lines have appeared and that is pretty much showing us our scale. So this is our scale right here. One, two, three, four. starts again so seven keys and this repeats all the way up and all the way down so it's the same keys all the way up and all the way down you can use any of these keys and it's gonna fit inside of your scale okay so in order to build a chord what you want to do is start at the root note which we picked was F we're gonna start down here and you're gonna skip every other note. This is how you start a, a chord, pretty much. 
So I put one here, I skipped one, put one here, skipped one, put one here. And now to get the second chord, what you're going to do is go up one. Also skipping, I skipped this one, put one, skip this one, put this one. Okay, and we're just going to duplicate that over. The way I'm doing that is if you hold control on your keyboard and then just press, just left click like normal and then drag over, you can copy everything. And then if you hit shift right above it and um, drag these over while they're highlighted, you're just going to duplicate whatever you uh, highlighted. So you can do it again if you wanted to. You could press control, control A to select all and then uh, shift. And you're just going to drag over. If you want to delete, just hit delete. So now we have this chord progression here. Now, obviously, it sounds way too basic. So we're going to start changing things. I'm, first, I'm going to get the bass notes. Actually, you know what? Let's change up around a couple chords. At least. So I think I'm going to bring this down. Okay, that sounds alright to me. So now we're gonna pick some bass notes. And the way you choose the bass notes is obviously the these bottom notes right here are they should kind of be a guide for you as where you should put your bass notes. But you can also switch it up and I'll show you here what I mean. Instead of doing that, you can you can mix it up. See here, I'm going with these keys instead. Right here, I'm using these as my bass note. And then we can bring it down to an F, make it more interesting. Already it's sounding more interesting to me. So once you have that, I'm going to add some effects to it. So we know it's on channel 11. If we go to our mi our channel, sorry, our mixer, we could see it's playing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, I'm going to try and keep it stock plugins. So you guys can use, if you're a beginner, you can use it. I'm going to go with a fruity chorus. We're gonna put a little bit of reverb on it. So the way I like to do my reverb is I'll pick a, uh, a setting here, maybe a cathedral. I'll turn the dry all the way down, turn the wet all the way up, make any adjustments I want to here, and then I'll use this knob as my wet knob to control how much amount of reverb is being used. So I'll show you guys what I mean. Already sounding a lot better. So now we're going to add a top melody. So what I like to do is whenever I start a beat, I usually do it in piano and then I'll change it over to a more interesting instrument. But I like to make the, the complete pattern inside of this one piano roll. So I'm going to make the top melody now. Let's see what we come up with.
shorten these a bit. See what I did there is at the top at the melody I was hearing a C sharp. Right? But down here in the chord I had a C. And what that does, if you play a C sharp and a C, they're literally right next to each other. Like a C sharp and a C. It, it sounds like this together. The only difference is I'm I'm playing one, I'm playing one all the way down here, and then I'm playing the C sharp up here. So it doesn't sound so bad. You guys got to be careful with that. So what I did to ch to make sure it sounded a lot better was I just moved this up. So I made the chord a little bit different. Now it flows better also into this chord. Now from this point, when you got this foundation down, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click this and I'm going to clone it. And I'm going to take this pattern and duplicate it. How I did that is I highlighted the green box. I pressed control C and then I went to the other green box. I pressed control V and it'll just highlight. If you want to delete it, just go to the box again and press delete on your keyboard or sorry, press control. You can get rid of it with control X, control X. So. What I like to do once I have this is start to find melodies inside of the chords. And how you do that is simply by moving these around a little bit and finding out rhythms inside of your chord. All right, that sounds pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my 808. So this 808 now that you have, always check every single time you use it. Left, uh, sorry, right click it, and you're gonna go edit in audio editor. You're gonna go to this little marker. You're gonna go detect pitch regions. What that's gonna do is bring up a key here. As you can see, it says D2. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to this window Go into the second tab at the top and I'm going to right click on my mouse on D, which is right here. As you can see, it changed the root note, D5. Okay, good. Now, let's go into our piano roll and we're going to draw out. Actually, one more thing we got to do is right click on the actual 808 and press cut itself. Make sure you guys do this because what that does is if you play two 808s right after each other, they're going to cut. It, like one 808 will stop as soon as I hit this 808. This 808 will stop as soon as it hits this one. If you don't do that, I'll show you right now what it sounds like. It just sounds like they're playing on top of each other. So if you cut it, 
sounds a lot cleaner. Okay, let's get back into this uh, 808 pattern. What you want to do for your 808 pattern is you're going to want to follow uh, the bass notes that we made earlier. So we know our bass note is over here. All right, these are our bass notes. I'm going to go ahead and bring this all up a couple octaves because I know it's too low. You can probably not hear it. Over there sounds good. Okay, so pretty much what I did there is I followed the bass notes. I changed uh, the location of the second note. There's pretty much, you can play around with this note. The second note, the first one's obviously always going to hit on the first beat. And the second one usually hits on the second beat. But if you want to play around, you're pretty safe to play around with this one. click on it and just fill each two steps. Another thing a lot of people don't know, if your hi-hat is, um, let me give you guys a better example. If you have a hi-hat with a long tail, like this, you see how that has a long tail there? There's still, it's not just a short hi-hat looks like the one that's in my kit which is this one, it's very short. A long hi-hat will look like this. If you guys wanna make it shorter, the way you guys do that is crank this out knob here. Change this out knob. As you can see, it's getting tighter, the hat, instead of sounding like this. All right, so, let's see what that sounds like. So let's go ahead and uh, put the clap in. Another tip for volume control purposes. What I like to do for my sounds is whenever I put like a clap down or a kick, I'll go into the velocity control and I'll turn the velocity all the way up. What it does is it turns up the volume without turning up the volume essentially. So for the kick, I got a little uh, trick that I learned from watching a lot of YouTube videos. <clears throat> and what it is, is you're going to click your 808 pattern. You're gonna go control C and then you're gonna control V on your kick. Once you do that, open up the piano roll of your kick. As you can see, it's not in the right uh, position. So you're gonna hit Alt K. This window will pop up. You're gonna wanna set it the same way I got it set. Only highlight that key. And then you're gonna hit accept. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna lay out the 808 pattern on C5, which is where the sample was originated in that key. I'm going to turn up the tempo a bit. I'm going to 
switch up the food. Oops, the keys. Try this. guys so i found this uh this instrument in expand it's called uh ethnic i don't even know how to pronounce that shit but bro beats made this pack shout out to bro beats and uh yeah it's an arpeggiator i'm gonna show you guys what it sounds like now <laughs> What I did to get that is I literally took the FL keys that I just made and I pasted it into that ARP and that's how it plays. With the piano, it sounds like this. And then with the drums, it sounds like this. unmixed unmastered so uh, i'll probably do that in another video if you guys want to see it if you guys learn something please like the video share comment okay
So once you have your pattern all done, what you're gonna wanna do is go into the playlist, right? You have your pattern, all your sounds, everything's playing all at once. This is pretty much like the chorus of your, uh, of your song, essentially. <music> So once you have that all, you're gonna go into your pattern, or sorry, your playlist, bring your pattern in there, or you don't even have to do this. So just go into your playlist. Okay, once you have all the sounds that you wanna use, I'm, I'm not gonna add anything else because I don't wanna waste any more time on that, but once you have the sounds that you want all done here, what this pretty much is, is like, this is gonna be like your hook. And what you wanna do is go into your playlist, click on this arrow right here, and you're gonna go split by channel. And if you did everything that I told you before and you split the channels inside of the mixer, then when you split by channel here, you're gonna get all your instruments and everything laid out over here. So you can now bring those into here and you can start laying out your beat. You have to change this if you're ever stuck in between song and pattern mode. If you want to listen to just the pattern, right? It's just going to listen to that pattern. If you want to go into song mode, which is your playlist, you have to click this up here. Or another thing you can do is also just click inside here. You guys are wondering how I'm dragging over <clears throat> all these uh, samples or all these instruments and stuff. It's the same way that I showed you guys earlier. I'm going control, left click, I'm dragging, I'm grabbing everything and then I'm hitting shift and I'm just moving it over. So what I like to do to get a quick layout is I will have one of them highlighted and then I'll go control B and I'll just keep going control B, control B all the way until I think my song's gonna end, which is around there. And now it's just a matter of taking stuff out. So this is gonna be my intro, my hook. It's probably gonna last till here. I'm gonna take out a lot of the drums here, probably. Keep the clapping. I'm gonna take out everything except for probably the, uh, the keys. So I didn't even end up using these. Or you can do something like this. thing I like to do say you have an instrument that you already have like these keys for example you can make this pattern unique by clicking this little piano here and going make unique and it's going to change this pattern so whatever I do to this pattern right now will not affect the number two so I'm going to go into this pattern I'm going to drop everything down an octave what that means is I'm literally dropping everything from f4 right here I'm dropping it from f uh, sorry, I'm dropping it from F5 to F4. That's all I'm doing. The way what I'm doing on my keyboard right now is I'm holding control and I'm pressing up and down on my arrow key. So uh, for the verse, I'm probably going to leave the piano low like this.
if you have your track laid out now and you want to fade in and out your volumes, what you want to do is go to your master channel. Also, another thing, sorry, I almost forgot to tell you guys, this limiter is garbage. Delete it every single time. Do not upload beats with that limiter on the master. What you want to do on the master is go to the master channel. You're going to right click on this um, mixer knob, whatever you want to call it, leveler. Right click and you're going to go to create automation clip. And now you're going to go back into your playlist. You're going to see this here. What that allows you to do is automate, literally computer automate your volume. So what I'm going to do is right click this dot. I'm going to go to copy value. I'm going to press uh, value, maybe even around here. Paste value. And now I'm just going to drag this one down. You get that nice little fade in. You can even drag this up a bit. the same thing at the end here I'm gonna start it from about here paste and I'm gonna drag this down Now you got a smooth intro, you got a smooth outro. And you can literally do that, what I just did with uh, that knob. You can do that with any knob you want. You can even, if you want to uh, put an effect on here, let's say you want to put an EQ on here. I like to do this a lot with a lot of my songs. So obviously this is the knob that's moving, right? So what we're going to do is right click this knob, create automation clip. And then we're going to... Uh, change these values here so I want it to come in slow and then stay consistent the whole song almost like we never put an EQ on it at all and I'll show you exactly what that's gonna do so I'm gonna go back to the EQ Alright guys, that's about it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, if you learned anything, please comment down below, subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see next. Like I said, this was asked for by one of my subscribers. He asked me to do a tutorial on this. So if you guys have any other ideas for me, let me know in the comments below. Share this video with someone who you think it might help. Also, go get that drum kit because like I said before, it's completely free. I'm going to leave the link down below. Go cop that drum kit. Support your boy. And thank you. Peace. Also, guys, if you guys, obviously, I didn't get a chance to mix and master this. If you guys do want to see my process in mixing and mastering, please leave a comment down below. My next video I upload will probably be on mixing and mastering. So let me know if that's something you guys want to see. If it is, I'll definitely do it. And yeah, this is the beat unmixed and unmastered. I'm going to play it for you guys right now. Peace.